In this tutorial, I'll show you a few techniques that I regularly use to achieve realistic materials. My name is Nikita. On this channel, you'll find a lot of useful lessons on the topic of architectural visualization. Subscribe to don't miss new useful videos. I use dirt textures to make my material look more varied. On the screen, you can see a simple fabric material with a slightly changed color in the diffuse channel and a slightly increased amount parameter in the sheen layer tab. You can watch a tutorial on creating a complex fabric material on my YouTube. I'm going to add a dirt map that looks like this. This card I'm going to apply to the base color slot. And now in the Corona Physical MTL material, I'm going to go down a little bit, find the base color item, and I'm going to change the intensity of the texture influence to the minimum. And you can see how the material started to look much more varied. You can download an archive with a lot of dirt and scuff textures from the link below this video. Here you can see a seam which looks bad. To avoid this, I use the Corona Triplanar node. I select this node and apply it to my chain. Slot X and you can see how it's starting to look better now. Inside the Corona Triplanar node, you can change the scale of your texture. Also try to use the dirt texture for glossy materials. You can see a simple metal material on the screen. This is also Corona Physical MTL with a modified metal mode with a reduced roughness parameter and let me apply a fingerprint texture to the base roughness slot. This texture looks like this. Right now, this texture looks too aggressive and let's reduce its intensity. I select the Corona Physical MTL material, go down and reduce the intensity of the base roughness texture. And now our material looks much more natural and realistic. But I want to draw your attention that you should not make the intensity of this texture too strong. The scuff and fingerprint effect should be nuanced. With this keyboard render example, you can also see how cool the scuff and roughness texture affects the feel of the render. Let me turn on the roughness texture. And here I also have the bump texture. I use the composite node, which will allow you to mix multiple dirt textures, thus making them more varied. The composite node will help make your materials even more varied and hide the repetition of any of your dirt textures. Let's look at this using the asphalt material as an example. I'll disconnect the composite node from my base slot and recreate it. Right button, Maps, General, Composite. The composite node is a node that allows you to create several different slots, add different textures to those slots, and blend them together in various ways. The principle is similar to Photoshop. I have two textures of dirt and roughness. I apply the composite node to base color, select the composite node, and add the first dirt texture to layer 1 in instance mode. You can see the changes. And now, let's go to the second slot, add the second texture. The third slot I'm going to remove for now. To see the changes in the material more clearly, I'll right-click on the composite node and select Open Preview Window. Now, I can see the changes in real time. Let's choose a blending mode that suits us. I do this by scrolling the mouse wheel. You can also use the opacity parameter to change the intensity of any of the maps. Also by clicking on any of the textures, I can change the tiling of that texture. I'll select the material and change the intensity of the composite map. The color in the base slot I'll make darker. And now we have something that looks like an asphalt material which needs some more tweaking. The Corona Renderer engine has a cool tool called Corona Distance. This will allow you to significantly diversify the material. Let's take the example of asphalt material. This technique is most often used in this particular case. So, I've added a box to my scene that stands on the surface of the asphalt. 
Let me add a Corona Distance node. I plug this node into the base slot of my material. And now I need to add an object to this node. The box will serve as a reference object. I select the box and click on the plus sign. Let's change the color near slot to red. I'm going to disable the rendering of this box. Right mouse button. Object properties. Uncheck renderable. And you can see how our object has become a reference for the Corona Distance node, and we have a trace of the object. We can adjust this effect with these parameters. I can check color inside. Change the color, color inside. Instead of colors, we can use textures. We can also add a black and white mask to the distance scale slot. I can create as many reference objects as I want. Don't forget to add new objects to the Corona Distance node. This is the kind of asphalt material you get if you work on it a bit. Here you can see the tracks from the wheels of cars. These tracks are created using the same reference objects. This is what it looks like in the viewport. What if I want to apply a grass texture material to this geometry? I have such a grass texture, and I'm sure we will see a repeating of this texture. Let's check it out. I'm going to apply the texture to the base color layer, reduce the texture a little bit. And you can see a clear repetition of spots, which will look bad on our render. To avoid this, we have a tool called the Corona Mapping Randomizer. Let's temporarily, instead of a grass texture, I'm going to apply a checker to make things more obvious. I'm going to apply the Corona Randomizer to this chain. Right mouse button. Maps. Corona. Corona Mapping Randomizer. I select this node, and here you can see the various randomization parameters. The first thing to do is to disable this checkbox and enable randomization by mesh element. Next, I'm going to change the rotation randomization range from 0 to 360 degrees with a rotation step of 10 degrees. I will also change the zoom range. Let it be from 70 to 120. Let the zoom step be around 10. Next, I will check the randomize each tile checkbox and increase the number of tiles. You can also increase the blending distance. And now you can see how this node works. This will allow us to avoid repeating different spots on our textures. Let's now apply our previous grass texture instead of the checker. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. Okay, it works that way. A common mistake beginners make is that they adjust the bump too much. This looks bad on renders and close-ups. I have a wood material. I click on it and reduce the bump setting. The bump should be barely noticeable, as you can see in my render right now. I have a normal texture serving as the bump with the Corona Normal node applied with Add Gamma to input checked. Here, I want to show you how to remove unwanted secondary color reflections from bright objects. This isn't always appropriate when you're creating interior renderings. So, to change this, we're going to use the Corona Ray Switch node. Right mouse button. Maps, Corona, Corona Ray Switch. We have a Corona Physical MTL material applied to our object with a Corona Color node plugged in to give it color. I selected Corona Ray Switch. In all the nodes, I connect our Corona Color node and I plug the Corona Ray Switch node into the base color slot. So far, nothing has changed. And now, to remove the secondary color reflections, I uncheck Global Illumination. And now, in the secondary color reflections, instead of Corona color, we have regular black light working. Here, I can set any color I need. The other two slots can be useful if you have, for example, a mirror in your scene, and you need to change the color of an object in the reflections, or if you need to change the color of an object visible through glass.
The most common case where you might need this trick is an interior and it's a reflection from the floor and walls to the ceiling. Often, customers want to see the ceiling perfectly white. And in this case, we still use the Corona Ray switch MTL node. Here I have the wood material applied to the floor and you can see how as I change the saturation intensity of the floor, we have changes on the ceiling as well. To minimize the color reflections, I'm going to use the Corona Ray switch node. Now there are no color reflections, but the ambient light has become too dark. Let's change that by clicking on a color node and increasing the brightness of that color. Your feedback is important to me. See you next time.